Hey guys, thanks for coming back and watching another episode of Builds by Bailey. Uh, I've been away for a little bit, went to California for a week with work. Um, while I was out there, I bought a bride racing seat. I got fitted for that at a place called Lot USA. It's just a little place. Uh, I thought it was going to be a lot bigger, but pretty small place. But he's got a lot of racing seats that you can sit in and try out and make sure that they fit you perfect. Um, so while I've kind of not been on YouTube for a little bit, I have done a little bit of body work on the front fender to try not to bore you guys. So tonight I'm going to try and prime this front fender because I have a friend coming in tomorrow that we're going to be doing some work on his Volkswagen. So I've got a few more customer jobs like that lined up over the next couple of weeks. So uh, I'll be able to show you a lot more work like that for other people. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, sand the bodywork that I've already got on here and the fender uh, to 220. Uh, that way we can have finishing scratches in it. So the primer will grab to that and uh, won't have those deep scratches that you see show up in paint later on. Uh, I do have to kind of cut this uh, a little quicker than I would have normally. So because I have to use the garage space to do other people's work, uh, cars. So uh, I would normally put a self-etch primer down on this bare metal, but you don't necessarily have to. Um, it just, it's an added thing that you can do. Um, but since I sanded all the rust off of the fender first, uh, on that, that way I can put the 2K urethane primer on top of that and it'll seal it and have a good bond and it won't crack like whatever that other paint was so paint uh, or so the water would get through that and actually create rust underneath it so we won't have that issue this time um, with what I'm doing uh, today so first we're going to take our 220 grit sandpaper I like to use DA rolls because it's just easier to buy that way but we're going to take our 220 grit sandpaper um, and kind of do the same thing we did with the stick and fold it in half. Uh, so I'm gonna take one off, fold it in half, and this is going to uh, give us the uh, the smoother scratches that we're looking for. Uh, you don't necessarily have to work really hard at this step. Uh, we're just kind of knocking the top layer off uh, and making it ready for the primer to go on. So that way you don't see uh, bodywork outlines in the future. Uh, this will prevent that from happening. So uh, we're literally just going to kind of run over it like you would with a Scotch-Brite pad. Uh, but remember to keep your fingers close together uh, and always work uh, against the grain of your fingers. So that way uh, you don't have those finger lines in it because that will show up in your body work. So remember to hold that and then sand off of your fingers, not uh, or perpendicular to your fingers. Don't necessarily go with the grain. So uh, we're going to do that for a little bit. I'm going to put this on a time lapse. And as soon as I get done with that, then we'll uh, wipe the car off and we'll start taping it for primer. Remember, if you are going to put primer on something, make sure that it is scuffed. If not, it will lift in the future. Even if you have already put paint down on top of it, it will bubble up and do some weird crazy stuff that you don't want it to do. So make sure that it has some scratches there that you're going to put primer. If not, you need to sand all that primer off uh, after you have uh, let it cure. So make sure you put uh, plenty of scratches over it so it'll grab.
I'm doing a color change on this car, so I'm not too worried about um, scuffing the edges. As you can see, I just scuffed the edges. So this will allow uh, the primer to have a good uh, even edge on the side of it. So when I spray it on, it's not got that uh, cracked blue paint that was on it beforehand. So uh, this way it's nice and clean. But normally don't do that if you're just doing some standard uh, blending onto another panel. That's like a no-no because you'll have to put paint on that edge and do some like crazy taping on the inside, which is really difficult. So normally uh, you wouldn't scuff your edges. Okay, so I've got it sanded down with the 220. Um, we are now going to blow all the dust off of it and get it ready to wipe down with wax and grease remover. So the wax and grease remover will lift all of any kind of oils or grease that could have floated onto the panel at any time. Um, it will also, uh, you know, kind of get all the rest of the loose dust off of it before we put the primer on top. So we don't have any fish eyes or any weird spots come up due to it just being dirty. So uh, a cleaner panel will also offer you a better paint job in the end. So the cleaner you can make it, the better it'll be. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is I've already gone ahead and I have blown off this side of the car. So all the loose dust is off of it. I kinda didn't wanna do that around the camera because I didn't want dust all over the camera. So I let the dust settle, uh, then I came back, and now we're going to wipe off the remaining stuff off of it so we can stick our tape to the edges. Um, so we're going to go ahead and wipe it off one good time. Uh, make sure you get all of your edges uh, that are uh, going to be taped because you want to get as much of that dirt and stuff off of that too. Because if you hit that with air on the paint gun, it will uh, kind of blow back and you'll get primer in places you didn't want it. So you want that tape to stick really well so it doesn't go uh, say in your door jams or all over your tire um, or under the hood kind of thing. Um, you don't want that kind of stuff to bleed into other areas because that just makes more work for you. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to wipe this off. Um, I like to do uh, two paper towels, one that has the solvent on it and then another one that is dry. Um, this stuff suspends all of your greases and your oils in it. So uh, the first one is basically going to put the chemical on and the second one is going to take what is lifted off of it. So uh, go ahead and I take just a sheet and I fold it in half and that's normally efficient. So we're going to do that. Uh, you can get wax and grease remover or this is surface cleaner which is the same thing at your local O'Reilly's. So uh, theirs is the Master Pro brand. This is Valspar, so I get it from my paint supplier. Um, but just you know, a generous amount. It doesn't matter if a little bit gets on the floor. It'll clean up real easy. But the first one, uh, basically, just wipe it over the surface. You'll see everything get shiny. And the second one, you're just going to wipe it off. And only do what you can manage at that time. If you don't wet the whole thing down because you don't want it to dry on you because then you just have to go back over it again. We're going to be doing this step again in a little bit once I have this taped off, but this will just get the stuff off at the beginning. even open the door jams and I'll run my paper towel down inside all the edges.
I'm either going to take the hood off and clean down inside that edge, and then I'm just going to mask off the inside of the fender from the uh, with the hood off of it, so that way uh, I don't have to put the hood back on, and that can be all clean. Also, another thing, don't put your towels on the ground because that just lets them soak up dirt. So if they do land on the ground, get new ones. So now that we have all of our edges clean, our panel's got a good clean wipe on it, uh, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a thing called back taping. And back taping, you're basically uh, going to tape the back edge of what you're not wanting paint on. So uh, rip off a pretty good amount. Um, the more you do this, you'll be able to just kind of go with the flow and not have to rip off as many small pieces. But we're just going to take the tape and we're going to put sticky side, you know, where it would normally go. And then there's going to be a good uh, section that's still sticky sticking above it. So we're going to fish that right down into here. With the sticky side still on this side. And what that's for is we're actually going to stick our paper to that so it's, it's on there a little bit easier. And this is kind of like pre-masking. You're going to, that way you don't have to fool with the paper all the time. You can just lay the paper onto that part and it's stuck to it. And you know it's got a good seal where you're going to put the paint edge at. So uh, this is the easiest way I've found to do it. Uh, in the few shops that I've worked at, this is how everybody else does it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to outline uh, doing a back tape on all the edges, uh, the wheel well, uh, inside the little headlight vessel back here, and at the door as well. So we're going to tape all that off real quick, um, and then we'll get the paper out and we'll lay tape on that and we'll paper uh, the back tape tape that we have on here. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and I'll see you at the next step. So I don't have one of those fancy paper trees, so uh, I take the paper and I roll out the section that I need, rip it off, and then I use the surface, since it's already clean, to put my tape edge on. So I lay my tape, you can kind of see it in the light, I lay my tape uh, half on the paper and half off of it so that there is a little edge that is sticky on the outside. So that sticky edge we're going to stick to the tape that's already been back taped that's on it. And that sticky X kind of like uh, like a magnet, and it sticks the two together real tight, really fast. So you don't have to really go behind and push the stuff down. Uh, it it kind of makes a really quick seal. So we'll do that over the whole thing real quick, uh, and then we'll prep the paint gun and get it ready with the primer in it. I'll show you the proper steps to mixing that, and then uh, every primer is a little bit different. So I'll explain that in a second, but. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and tape it off. Okay, so I picked up a it, fairly inexpensive uh, paint gun from uh, Harbor Freight. So they actually lay pretty good paint out. Uh, 
if you have your settings set right. Um, but so, but I use them as primer guns. I've got like five or six of them. They last for a short period of time, and then they gum up or uh, something happens to them. The, they're normally like ten, twenty dollars, so I don't really uh, care if they really mess up bad. Uh, I just kind of throw it away and get another one. So I use lacquer thinner, which is probably not the preferred way uh, to clean out uh, a gun in most cases, but it works very well. So I use lacquer thinner uh, before I uh, get completely done with a section. I will put a uh, a little bit of thinner in it. Um, before I finish the taping off and that little bit of thinner will kind of soften up anything that's still left in there and then I'll just drain that out into uh, a bucket that I have that I've probably already used for uh, some kind of waste uh, already so uh, I'll squirt that into there and if I have to take it apart I'll take it apart and I'll brush it uh, make sure that it's nice and clean on the inside but I try to clean it out really well uh, at the very end anyways so I don't have to do that step but occasionally it does happen uh, it's been a, probably a month or two since I've used it so uh, we might have to do that but I hope not so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll squirt the remaining liquid that's inside of here out uh, and then we'll go from there. Oh, I also like to uh, take the cap off whenever I uh, put a little bit of thinner in it right before I get ready to use it and put it in there because it tends to have uh, buildup on it too. And if any buildup is on the end of it or near any of the little ports, uh, then it'll spray sideways or it won't give you a nice even pattern. Uh, it'll do some crazy stuff. So uh, I like to make sure that it's really clean too. So, uh, you know. If you haven't picked up yet, uh, cleanliness is the best thing when it comes to doing body work. The cleaner it is, the better it is. Uh, and that kind of thing goes with your tools too. The cleaner it is, the easier it sprays, the more consistent it is, uh, and uh, you won't have any problems uh, in the future. It'll just make things better. So just try and keep everything as clean as you can uh, and go from there. When I'm uh, squirting the thinner out uh, at this time, I check for things like the make sure that the stream coming out of it is uh, you know straight. It doesn't have a lot of turbulence in the liquid. Uh, if it does have a lot of turbulence, then I know something's hanging off the end. If I can kind of brush the end of it off real quick with my fingers, uh, and then it cleans up, then I know it's just a little bit of trash at the end. But if it starts to like sputter then there's a lot of trash on the inside. At that time is when I would take the cap end off and brush it out uh, and basically clean the whole uh, pathway where the paint flows through the, the gun. This one seems to be doing pretty well though, so I'm probably just gonna be able to uh, you know, let what's in here come out and then uh, wipe it off real quick and put it together and it'll be ready to load with primer. Okay, so I have already opened up my can of primer and I've made sure that the stuff on the bottom of it is uh, all one consistency. You know, there's not a whole bunch of uh, thick stuff at the bottom. Uh, normally, if it gets that way, it's starting to get bad. So I don't recommend using stuff that's separated really bad. Uh, this is still really good and thin on the inside. So we're going to use that uh, today. Um, this is kind of a cheap 2K urethane primer. Um, that I get from my supplier. Uh, not, uh, you know, that expensive. I think a can of this is like uh, 40 or 50 bucks for a gallon of it, you know, plus the hardener. I could be wrong about that, but it's been a little while since I bought it. I don't buy this stuff that often because uh, a can of this will last me a really long time. So, um, this stuff mixes four to one. Um, normally, they're going to put the mixing ratio on the side of the can. Uh, so this one says mixing ratio four parts to one part. So what that means is uh, we're going to take um, four, basically think of it in units. So we're going to take four equal units uh, to one part of the hardener. So uh, basically think like four quarts to one quart. Or, you know, that kind of thing. So this whole gallon and this one quart of hardener goes together. By the end of it you should use the like both cans should be empty whenever you finish it out. 
So and they're normally sold in pairs. Uh, and you know, just double check your uh, your ratio. It'll be on the side of the can. If you can't find it in a simple sticker uh, like that, which most of them have, then they'll be farther around in like the mixing direction section. So you'll just have to kind of read through there to see what they recommend. So, and you can also kind of, uh, if you want it to be a little bit thicker, um, you can put a little bit more of the primer uh, in there and a little less hardener. Uh, and that'll make it a little bit thicker to go on if you're trying to build it up a bunch. Um, or if you want it to be a little bit thinner, I don't recommend putting more hardener in it. Uh, this, since this is a, a urethane, they make urethane reducer and that will actually reduces the consistency of it. So uh, I'm actually going to put a little bit of reducer in the primer, uh, like a splash, and that'll help thin it out just enough to where um, it will come out of the gun easier since I'm using a cheap Harbor Freight paint gun. You kind of want it to be the consistency of milk. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix out four parts of the primer and then one part of the hardener. And uh, then I'm going to go grab my urethane reducer because I forgot to grab that and I put a, a splash in there of that and then mix it all together and get it ready to go in the paint gun. So these measuring cups that I have have a like a diagram and stuff all the way around it. Um, I don't necessarily like using the one that says 4 to 1 because that ratio most of the time is not right. So it's got a scale on the side that goes 1 to 10. So I just think in my head as if it were a fraction and I'm going to put uh, you know four parts up to four and then I'm going to put one more part above that of the hardener. So this time since I don't need a whole lot to go over the whole panel, um, I'm only going to do two to a half. So you can, you know, cut it in half if you need to um, or, you know, act out like it's a fraction and just minimize it until you get the amount that you need. Okay, this is my urethane reducer. Um, literally just going to put a splash of that in there. And that's all it takes. Not much, just a little bit and that'll do a whole lot. And it thins it out to where, uh, you know, it's real, real smooth. Um, it doesn't take a lot for the paint stick to go through. So you kind of, like I said, you want it to be the consistency of milk. So, you know, not real runny like water would be, but just enough to where it kind of clings to the paint stick because at that time it comes out of the gun real easy. Okay, every time uh, whenever I get ready to put my uh, paint or my primer or whatever um, I am, you know, going to be loading into my paint gun, um, I always use a strainer. Um, these are normally free whenever you pick up your paint or your supplies. So make sure you get quite a few of them. Sometimes I double up if I think the stuff's going to be really thick. Um, but this time I know it's not because I just mixed it. So uh, I'm just going to use one strainer. And you normally can just pick the stuff up and dump it straight in. Also when you're doing this, check and make sure that there's no lumps or trash uh, in it and that's what the strainer is going to pick up. Um, you can also check its consistency and see if it's what you wanted it to be. So now that you've got enough paint in your gun to do all of this, which it really doesn't take a lot and I might actually have to mix a little bit more but it's a lot better to mix for a second time uh, just a little bit more than it is to waste a bunch of it. So mix it in small quantities uh, a little bit goes a long way. So next thing we're going to do is safety first. I'm going to go grab my uh, respirator and put that on and then we're going to go ahead wipe this off one last time and then uh, we will you know go ahead and start putting the primer on there.
Okay, we're going to uh, go ahead and put your respirator on. We're gonna do a couple of test passes on some of the outside paper to make sure that our pattern is nice straight up and down. We don't have any heavy spots on the top or on the bottom. Um, so we're gonna make sure that it's a nice even pass. So that way whenever we start to lay it on that it's not got a real heavy spot at the top and thin at the bottom or the opposite, you know. You want it to be nice and even over the whole coat. So that way when you do your overlap that you're not putting streaks in it. Because when you go to sand that down later, you'll be able to see that. So uh, there's a couple of adjustments on the side of the paint gun. Um, those are what you can use to kind of fine tune it a little bit. Um, but also remember that the tip needs to be clean. So uh, once that's, you're good that that's clean, then you can start rolling it out for other stuff. And if you can't fix it that way, then the needle might be messed up inside of it. So uh, there's just a whole bunch of things that could be. So just make sure that everything's clean and that you can adjust it with the side. If not, it might be time for a new cheap paint gun. Okay, the first thing that I saw that I have a nice, clean, football shaped uh, pattern and a nice straight line. So I'm ready to put some primer on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this whole thing out. Oh, another thing, uh, use the air from the paint gun uh, and kind of get the last little bit of dust off of it before you start. Uh, don't pull the trigger all the way back, just use the air function of it. You'd be surprised at how much that can keep trash out of your paint job. Let that sit for a few minutes and then it'll be ready for another coat. Okay, I got two really good consistent coats over the whole entire uh, fender here. Uh, you can see right there where I had to put that body line back in, so that came out pretty straight. Um, sometimes you can't see how well this stuff's going to do until you actually put primer on it for the first time. So this I'm actually just going to use kind of like uh, liquid bondo and I'm gonna go ahead and put a guide coat on it and I'm gonna block that off in the future uh, and then actually reprime the fender again so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I pull the paper off and then uh, that way I don't get any the overspray from the guide coat anywhere um, and then this pretty much will be done so thanks again for watching uh, Builds by Bailey uh, check in. I've got, like I said, uh, some friends are coming in town and I'm going to be doing some work on some Volkswagens. Going to be notching some frames, uh, doing some metal work, uh, and also doing some uh, paint work on their cars as well. So, thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.